So much has been said about lost ancient civilizations, I bet you think there's nothing new to think or to look at. What is missing from so many of the videos is that when we talk about Atlantis or Mew or any of the others, those are the mythic remains of ideas for a place that might have been very real and what happened to them was likely very tragic. All over the world, you'll find tantalizing hints of something that came before anything that we are told is history. There are the stories that came from all over the world that boil down to strangers who came from away and taught us what we know. There are also places and things that seem to defy explanation and certainly seem out of time for what historians tell us. In this video, Rather than rehearse the stories about Atlantis or Mew, we're going to take a look at some of these lesser known places and things and talk about what happened to the actual lost civilization that came before known history. The Denisovan Bracelet Denisovans are an early type of human that we know from a very few fossilized remains and their DNA. They were first discovered in a cave in Siberia, although they have also been found in Tibet and Laos. There is still much to learn about them, but they date to approximately as old as 200,000 years before now. They were an early offshoot from the Neanderthals, and although modern humans have both Denisov and Neanderthal DNA, much is murky about who bred with who and when. Scientists are still untangling the lines of DNA, and since less than 1% of all remains turn into fossils, we have a lot left over to discover. Although we would think that they must have been very primitive, the Denisovan bracelet shows that they must have been far more advanced than we would think an early ancestor of ours would be capable of. The bracelet is made from stone and dates from between 70,000 to 40,000 years old. Most importantly, for what we are looking at at the marks in the hole, if you look closely, you can see that it was drilled. In fact, it doesn't look much different than something we might see today. Another interesting find that comes from the Denisova cave is what is now thought of as the world's oldest needle which means that they weren't just putting on the hides of their kills, but were actually making clothes. What does this indicate for what has been lost to time? This would make it reasonable to believe that they did have a much more advanced culture than we thought, much earlier than we thought. With the rise in sea levels after the last ice age, it's no wonder we haven't found what we've been looking for yet. The Longyu Caves in China Originally, these caves in Zhejiang, province of China, were found by some farmers who decided to drain some ponds. It took them days and days of what seemed like endless water. What they found was extraordinary. There are five large and 19 smaller caverns that were carved out by someone. Although they average out to a stunning 30 meters in height, 30 meters in width and an incredible 60 meters in length, it has been estimated that the cave's date took approximately 2,000 years ago. It has also been estimated that it took a year per cave, and that is with people working around the clock. What is of most interest to people looking for is this uniformity. Show the pattern in the stone of the scratches in the stone no one has found any evidence for any type of lighting and also the fact that none of them connect. Although there have been many ideas suggested for the use, no one has any definite answers. This begs the question, why would you put in all that work for what seems like nothing? Next on our travels, we head down to Indonesia. Gunung Padang is a fascinating place located in West Java, Indonesia. Often talked about is its pyramid-like structure consisting of terrace layers and megalithic blocks. It is still partially covered by soil, so there is a great deal of debate about what and how it was built. Did humans create this or is it a natural formation? 
Indonesia is prepared to find out with a detailed sum of its military to help with its excavation. Currently, there is a lot of ongoing discussion about who and when it was constructed. Some estimate that the oldest layer is 28,000 years old. That would make it 15,000 years older than much more well-known Gebekli Tepe. If the dating ends up being accurate, it would rewrite what we think of as ancient history, since so much of it is still underground and ground-penetrating radar can only tell us so much. Expect to be hearing about this place for years to come. Kostinka 11 was first found in the 1950s and dates to around 40 to 50,000 years ago. What is of interest to us is the circular structure of mammoth bones that dates to around 22,000 years ago. It is fairly large with diameter of around 12 and a half meters. These types of structures have been found all across Eastern Europe and arguably for a more cohesive culture than was previously thought. Given the Denisovan bracelet, it's hard not to let this imagination take us to places that seem rife with possibility. After all, today we have advanced cultures coexisting alongside much more technological primitive people. So why couldn't it have existed back then? So what do these places and items tell us to have to tell us about the ultimate and lost ancient super civilizations? What they tell us is that something came before. The technology to create that bracelet can't exist in a vacuum. We might not have found it yet, but there has to be some sort of precursor to it and some sort of development from it. However, that doesn't mean that it wasn't lost due to a catastrophic event. But why haven't we found more? And what could have happened to this ancient lost super civilization? The worldwide nature of myths left that seem oh so similar to each other are also tantalizing. It would seem there was some sort of global cataclysm. One possibility that seems much more like the destruction of Atlantis is the Younger Dryas event. The Younger Dryas event occurred approximately 11 to 12,000 years ago during the last ice age. At the time, the Earth was gradually recovering and warming up. However, that was suddenly about to change. For currently unknown reasons, there was a sudden melt in the ice sheet covering North America. One theory is that a comet or meteor hit and in the heat from the impact melted it and contributed to a rapid rise in sea levels. It also would have disrupted the way the Earth regulates its temperature. This would have meant that the average temperature would have cooled between 5 and 10 degrees Celsius. Although this may not sound like much, it would have had a significant effect on the people living back then. In Europe, for example, humans would have had to move back to more temperature climates and it also led to the extinction of the megafauna, such as the woolly mammoth and saber-toothed tiger. It was especially devastating to the megafauna of North America at that time with massive extinctions that would have disrupted the ecosystem that the people living here depended on. Considering some of the sophistication of these places and peoples, it is not unthinkable to think about a lost advanced civilization. In fact, it seems more than likely it did cause a massive disruption to whatever cultures existed back then. If something like that happened now, what would be left of us? My guess is very little. Well, where does this leave us? There is so much left to find and place into context. What is left in our oceans? Perhaps that is the most important place to look. The global sea level rose more than 120 meters at the end of the last ice age. That's like losing several continents of land, so what might be beneath the waves? There have been long reports of divers reporting structures in the water, and while some of them might be natural rock formations, it would defy reason that all of them are. As techniques improve to excavate underwater, and as we get better at identifying possible sites, who knows what we might find there? Maybe the best is left after all. 
While we might hope and dream of finding the lost city of Atlantis or Mu, there are important and interesting discoveries being made now. Eventually, they won't be able to wash all the evidence for a missing piece of our story away. In the meantime, it is important for people with an interest to keep looking at what is found and seek to a place in it in a broader context. Frequently, just because a person is considered an expert in one topic doesn't mean they have all the knowledge of things outside this area of study. They may, for example, know everything there is to know about the Giza Plateau and be utterly uninterested in what is happening in Turkey. Amateurs are more likely to have a broad range of knowledge and relate things to each other. The word amateur, which people use so diversely, comes from the Latin word amateur, which means one who loves. To be an amateur is to love what you're studying. Stick with what you love. Thank you for being with us until the end of this video. You can support us by subscribing to the channel or leaving a comment.